combined height of 9 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at a total combined weight of 911 pounds. They are the teeth of Blaze Haram and Ben Hameen, the sons of Allah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here from Elevate and here in West Berlin, New York. Alongside Charlie Goldberg and Justin Parker and Cody Jenny, bringing you Immortal Championship Wrestling Redemption 3. Redemption 3, Redemption, that is synonymous with opportunity. That's what everybody's after, always in professional wrestling, but especially here tonight. Charlie Goldberg, I missed you. How are you? How you doing? Justin, I'm feeling alive, Cody. I'm excited, I'm energized, and I can't wait to be back here on commentary. This could be all of our Redemption story because we're going through the last show. And we're here tonight. Nope, not a one of us. Well, you want to talk about a team that's been looking to give a little bit of redemption here at Immortal Championship Wrestling. It's none other than the Sons of Allah. Since they lost the Immortal Tag Titles, they kind of been in this little bit of a funk lately. That's true. Somebody's pissed in their post postseason. They're pretty upset about it. They want those tag team championships back. But they got to deal with the Nazi Mafia first. And it's all from my way of 1,000 pounds of Prego! Hailing from Buffalo, New York, they are the team of Frank Nazi and Guy Canovino, the Nazi Mafia! Well, the Nazi Mafia are certainly getting a strong reaction as they make their way to the ring. You see it on the shirt, Cody, it says stir the sauce. That's what they do. They come out here and they stir the pot. They get the people riled up in a good way. Not in the garbage way that Tommy and Blaze Rom are known to do. But gentlemen, here's the big factor here. Dan Nachi not with them tonight. He's abducted. Abducted. But how do we have Oh, and here we go. We're not going to waste any time. There it is. The bell rings. And remember. It was the Sons of Allah who defeated the Nazi Mafia at Halloween Havoc in under seven minutes, but they did it by cheating. So this is really a big story of redemption. Yeah, of course they did it by cheating. I didn't have to check the, the show notes to know that that happened when we were in our absence. That's what they do, Blaze Haram and Bin Hamid. And it seems like it's time for Gaetano Vito to step up and step into the Nazi Mafia in a more serious role. And it starts here tonight. Oh! That's not what Ben Hamin wanted to go. Easy to get tied up in those ropes in all sorts of ways, gentlemen. You might get pink off him. That's true. And then now here, the Nachi Mafia in complete control. This one early on after a little bit of a hot start there from the Sons of Allah into the cover. Only two. I'm feeling that rock and roll express energy. I'm feeling that kind of synergy in a tag team between these guys early on. I like that. Well, they're fun-loving. The fans here in Westmoreland adore them. They're 1,000 plus pounds of sauce. I gotta ask, you know what cover? Only got one. Well, sauce Sunday. I don't know if you know about that. Yeah, you know, I don't want to get too far off the rails here, but there's a lot of sauce. It's not a small thing. It's, it's a large thing. And that's how they happen. So, I mean, if you take a look at, at Big Frank Nachi over there, I, I could see a couple pounds. Out, but now Nachi Mafia reeling the outside. And once again, do the very distracting. Wait a minute here. Blaze her rock and drive? It's nope. tough to do with pointy boots. You can't just get caught. Nachi Mafia trying to knock down Blaze her rock and just do it way possible. Finally, after that stiff headbutt. And one of the back ahead, but of course, to make the eyes of a big hot man. A back break should not be interesting. It hurts way more than you think, even if you are going to You know, the Nazi Mafia, they've lost two matches in a row. They want that for Jensen. It's almost like a show was named specifically for them. They're coming into this. I've seen the videos on social media. They're coming in hot and bothered. When you talk about the Nazi Mafia wanting redemption, how about the Sons of Allah, former tag team champions? They lost against the Nazi Mafia. True, Nazi right. Mafia. Now here, set right into the big 
boot in her front to her rob. Poor Vito is desperately trying to get over to Frank. He's got nowhere to go here, though. And Frank gets some people a into this. Yes, he's got no. You're right. I'm sorry. But look at what the Sons of Law have done. They've isolated Vito on the other side of the ring. Yes, you're right. The double pointy boots in the midsection, right in the solar plexus, right in those intercostal muscles. You know, you tear those, and it's going to be a tough time breathing anytime. Not just in a wrestling. Much as the gentlemen we disagree with how the Sons of the Law act and how they won matches very various ways. basically everything. You gotta give them their credit though. They, they were the longest reigning ICW Tag Team Champions for a reason. And Rick again beating this time the boot of Ben Hamed. Suplex there. You know, desperately got to get over to Frank. He's right to the spine. I um, mean, you're correct, Cody, in a lot of ways. I mean, does pull no punches. He's, he's out there just throwing sledgehammers, doing everything that he can to get over on somebody. And that's a kind of helpful strategy. It's not about technique, it's just about the results. And so he's not here to make it look pretty. He's here to fight, he's here to win. And that's exactly what Ben Hamid is up to right now. And he is going to take some dirty ways to get there. Okay, a bit of a hip swivel there. Seems like he's got mobility issues. Frank Nazi's trying to get into this match. He's getting the people all stirred up, and he's going to use that energy when he gets to the main road. But he's got to get there first. He's got to get it done. That's exactly it's a matter of getting in between those ropes. And right now, he's just been very inefficient and able to do so. So the Sons of the Lock keep him isolated in the rear half of the ring. Like it or not, it is effective. Well, it's no surprise this team has been the longest running tag champ. They truly know what they're doing in a, in a Mortal Championship wrestling ring. And remember, Blaze, a former Northeast champion, Ben, a former world champion. Right, right now, guys, we see a little bit of fight in Vito. And Vito gets him up. Oh, Spybuster! And this is that first into the cover for the win. Only two. I'm surprised that he went for the cover after that. I'm surprised he That speaks to the fighting spirit. That speaks to somebody who wants to prove their weight. Uh, that they're pulling their weight in the Nazi Mafia because remember, this is the first match without Dan Nazi. Dan Nazi, we don't know where he is. Been abducted by him. Plays around. And there's the tag we've been waiting for to Frank Nazi. Rolling over there by Frank. I want another one. Way to the mush. Look at the strength of Frank Nazi on display. Yeet! All the way slammed there by Frank Nazi. I think we can draw a reasonable comparison. You see, most people would just say, oh, that's a move that Scott Hall used to do. But here's something about Scott Hall, deceptively large and I think he describes Frank Nazi to a T. I think he's much bigger than we give him credit for. Obviously, he's got a great physique, but look at him, he's got power, he's got strength, he's got agility, he's got speed. Three back to back to back, rolling uppercuts. And he's looking to put some sauce on it that time. He calls that the basal leaf. Into the cover, for the win, two and a half. He doesn't call that that, I call it that. Yes, he should. So two and a half there for Frank Nachi. It's Nachi Mafia back in control. By the time Alvino taking his shirt off on the apron, starting to lose that. Yeah, there's the wake in the eyes. That er, blinds Frank Nachi just enough to at least get them up in a moment of peace. Let that shot right to the shins. Takes him down. The sauce one nine, is that what I just heard? That's exactly what you just heard. And they get it. The sauce one nine, that area coach kick, hit by Frank, followed up by a stone crushing finale, face first on the canvas, goes Ben. Wait a minute, what coronation is this? Gaetano, Vito, a bit distracted. Oh no! What? what? The In the, the world. Wait a minute! That's the man that's been abducted. And our YouTube exclusive match earlier. Do not have been abducted this man. True. Zach Briggs, I believe. Yes, that's Zach Briggs. But, oh, low blow. What is Sticks doing out here now? 
Low blow, blow, referee Richard Head saw it, touch her mile away. You can see a change in demeanor. And now the sons of Allah, as what is in the world is Strix doing? Done away with the pleather tights and can do attitude. Oh, big time spin kick from the man in black over here. Looks like Strikes was kind of hypnotized by the Sons of Allah to join their side here, to join the dark side. Well, that's one way to do it. You gotta eventually grow the ranks when you're, I mean, if you're gonna call yourself the House of Saad, there should at least be enough people to fill the room. So I guess that makes sense. Well, the, the double fish hooks in. But I'm wondering why, Zach Striggs, what made you go this route as opposed to sticking with your team UWE? And here's my theory, but no disrespect to Striggs, but during the pre-show, nobody in the crowd knew his name. Now we're all saying his name. He aligned himself with one of the big powerhouse teams of ICW. Striggs looked to make a statement, and he damn well did it. And I think he's staking a claim. I don't know if it's about too much of a statement. I think he... All right, let's, let's level here. Young wrestling student. Working under Ben Hamid, from what I understand, of course he's going to be impressionable to him, but maybe he's just trying to stick to him. Maybe he's trying to cash in and ride some coaches.